Welcome to Working the Web to Win. I'm your host, Carl Weiss. With me is co-host Hector Cisneros, and today we have a special guest, uh, Roy Buncombe of Buncombe Technologies. Hi, everybody. Hi. Well, today we have another day, another, another online dilemma, right? Uh, one of the things that we covered uh, last week was the firestorm over uh, the uh, Stop Online Privacy Act. Well, this week we've got a brand new one. Everyone's been uh, talking about the uh, latest online hornet's nest that involves Google and their privacy policy. Have you been following that, Hector? Yeah, I've been following it. I mean, it really sort of strikes me strange that they would sort of do it at this time, but I mean, they're the gorilla. They can do what they want, you know? Well, pretty much, but like I said, uh, the, the thing that's really got everybody up in arms is the fact that they're assuming that they have absolutely no control over it. In fact, I've been reading a, a few articles that are out online, and, and one of the things that they were saying was uh, the fact that if you spend an hour logged on to Google searching the web for skateboards, the next time you log into YouTube, you might get recommendations for videos featuring Tony Hawk along with ads for his merchandise and the nearest place to buy them. Well, is that, is that a big difference from the way they were doing it before? Uh, it sort of is. I mean, before you had to essentially sign off on each service. Uh, you literally had to log in, mm -hmm. to Gmail or whatever it was, YouTube and so on. And now, when you log in, they sort of track you no matter where you are. Yeah, but one of the things that we were assuming and we found out we were wrong was the fact that you can't go in and do something about it, right? It's just a little bit different than it used to be. Well, you can actually make changes, but you have to go in there and say, okay, I don't want you tracking me here, I don't want you doing this there. You have to literally turn it off in the individual services that you plug into. So that's a little different before. I mean, now it's one privacy policy, but if you want to turn off anything, you have to turn them off individually. Right. Whereas before you had to turn them all, you had to answer them all individually and turn them off individually. So um, I know they sent a letter to Congress, because I'm going to try and bring that up on the Internet here when I have a chance. Yeah, the Congress has been involved, but of course, you know, a lot of what's been going on out there has been uh, hitting the... Uh, the news. Uh, I, I picked up several articles just by doing a you know quick search online. What scares people is that since Google's so big, that Google could now then say you did a search here and then you go to YouTube and now it's automatically going to be recommending videos on skateboarding or whatever. Right. Well, of course, they'll probably do the same thing on Google Plus and and places like uh, Blogger. I mean, they own right. that too, so they'll have ads popping up that are targeted. But I mean, is is that such a bad thing? It's not a bad thing for advertisers, I uh -oh. mean, from that perspective, but as far as when consumers go, who are people who are paranoid about the Internet tracking them and all that kind of stuff, it's probably a bad thing for those people. So, so what's your take on this, Roy? My take on it is that just Google is in so many things, including the phone, including the email. Mm -hmm. And my, my, my interpretation of the policy is they're saying, we're going to cross-reference all the data we have. Mm -hmm. So if I share information with I'm a colleague and they don't opt out, mm -hmm. they can still get my information from their device or their email. Right, right. So my opting out doesn't stop the information I share to other people that have Gmail. True. And, those, and that's my concern. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I mean... Uh, as far as I'm seeing things, it looked like it was already going in that direction anyway. Uh, I mean, that's the reason that, the, you know, there's just like when you're talking about the Internet, one of the good things about the Internet is everything is quantifiable, everything is trackable, but obviously that, that information is going to be used by somebody somewhere. Uh, and in certain ways I can understand why some people get a little bit, you know, bent out of shape by it, but in a certain sense, it, it was almost an inevitable conclusion, right. right? Yes, that is correct. Well, one of the things that they're saying is that they're trying to be more transparent. And the reality is, having one single policy that affects everything is a way of being transparent. So that they are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that uh, the eight or so congressmen that wrote them were concerned that people couldn't turn off mm -hmm. the ability to track them and so on. Mm -hmm. And you can. You can actually go in there and say no cookies and all this other kind of stuff. And you just have to be vigilant that if you want to do that, you have to still do that. Right. People who are real paranoid and stuff can do that. I mean, that's... Well, I mean, i got a smartphone here and it's got a GPS chip. And I'm more right. concerned about people tracking me with that than I am with I'm doing online. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's the way things are today, you know. Um, <clears throat> you're carrying around a cell phone uh, that you can surf the web on. Now, one of the things I did read about uh, the uh, the Droid phones is they were saying if, for instance, you don't log in 
on Gmail that they were actually saying that there's a possibility that some of the features won't function as well. Have you heard anything about that? Well, I don't know about that, but you know, it, it, it fits a Google phone. Yeah. You have to log into Google at saying. least right. to use, to the, use phone. the features. Yeah. So the, the mail wouldn't work. Right. So what you would have to do is log into your browser on yeah. your phone and then pull mail and the, you know, all that other kind of stuff. Your tablets are the same way. So if you don't log into Google immediately, most of that stuff is disabled even if you have an internet connection. You'd have to literally log in to Gmail via your browser, whether it's right. Firefox or whatever. Or Safari, and then you'd have to get all that stuff. So, so, so ultimately, I mean, what do you think? Do you think this is something that is going to be force them to make some changes, or do you think it's just going to be a fact that everybody's going to have to get used to the the new paradigm? I think uh, Google ain't going to change it. That's what I think. <laughs> they're their gorilla, and this is their rules, and this is their company. I mean, if you don't want to use their stuff, their their point of view is then don't use their stuff. Right, and you know, and from a certain aspect, uh, you know, I understand it because obviously I'm in the advertising game too, and the one big problem that that killed the web not too long ago when dot com went to dot bomb was the fact that banner advertising was was way overpriced. People just weren't getting the the ads in front of them that they needed to make any type of decision, and as a result, it hurt the people that were running <coughs> the websites. Right. And I'm sure that uh, you know Google is seeing some some changes because I've got several clients myself that are you know seeing some changes not only in the organic side of the equation but also on the pay-per-click side. So eventually they have to make the model work, or guess what? There won't be any business. That's right. If it's not cost-effective for people, and right now with the economy being in the dirt, I mean it makes a big difference I think for a lot of people. Um, I mean, it used to be people had lots of money for radio and TV and yellow pages and all that kind of stuff, and all those things today really have priced themselves out of the market for some, most people. That's why ad agencies, for the most part, are starving, because I don't have $5,000 to produce that TV show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we talk about that. Also, you know, I mean, look at it from the, the aspect, even if you do have the money to produce a television ad, okay, television ads are, are, are really taking it on the jaw simply because of the fact that you, as an individual consumer, can opt out just by having a DVR. Right. You never have to watch the You commercial. click on your TiVo and you skip it. Boop. Yeah, or, or even if you're watching it, you can mute it. So, I mean, here you are, you're going to spend thousands of dollars to produce and who knows how much money to air a, uh, an ad that how many people are actually going to pay attention to. Right. And, and many companies also are producing free TV shows and all that kind of stuff on the Internet. There are uh, free movie sites yeah. on the Internet where yeah. they're paid for by advertising. Right. It goes around the movies and yeah. so on. So a lot of these advertisers that have been doing it the old way are starting to hurt, but the good news is it's very low cost for consumers and it's very low cost for business people who are savvy enough to take advantage of it. So well, you know, we do a lot of that ourselves. And, yeah. and the one thing that's nice about it, you can shoot not only just advertisements, you can also shoot full-blown uh, episodic TV shows right. on Google where you literally put them on YouTube and you don't have to pay anybody to air the shows. It's a big trend that's starting to happen right now. Absolutely, we're I embracing it. I know you have one lawyer that you're doing that with. Oh, and we've got, actually right now we're producing four shows. Wow. And, so. you know, it's, we're going to actually, in, a, in an upcoming episode, when we don't have tech technological problems, we're actually going to talk about uh, that trend and, and some of the shows that we're producing and, and how it's changing the face of the Internet. Because that's the one thing that I tell people. There's only one certainly when it comes to online marketing, and that's change. Yeah. So, you know, you can either go with the flow or you can try to fight it. But